Let me let me try. Perfect. We have just started recording the meeting. So let's see you all here on this occasion. It's very first meeting of 2022, joint one. First part of the meeting, pleasure to kick start this one, uh, awesome speech by Mr. Tomasz Kubiak from ICC, policy manager of ICC in Paris. So it's a pleasure to have you here, Thomas, today. I think we can avoid reading the whole policy, by the way, you will find it on the wiki page. So I would love to handle this to, to Thomas to kickstart the meeting with his own presentation. Then after this one, we're going to present the merging of the two SIGs between trade financing and uh, supply chain SIG. Thomas, please take the stage. Stage is yours and go on with the presentation. Glad to have you today with us, by the way. Thomas, do you have slides that, that you would, uh, wish to share? Yeah, if you let me share it, I can definitely. Uh, you should have access to sharing. Yeah, should be should be fine. Can you see it? Yep. Okay, I think my computer just froze. The cold weather's in Canada, Tom, it's not in Paris. <laughs> well, Paris sometimes is also pretty cold. Oh, yeah. come on now. We're not going to go down that road, are we? You don't know cold. I don't know that road, but I can grant you that. You're saying taking a coffee, opening it sometimes. Oh, yeah, ah, okay. I think it's better. Okay, we can, okay. We can start. So f thank you, first of all, thank you for having uh, having me um, today um, for, for the meeting. Uh, I'm Tomasz Kubiak, uh, Policy Manager at, uh, at the ICC Banking Commission, and I'm together uh, with our BCG partners, Ravi Hanspel. Uh, we are delighted to, to provide you some, some insights on our project to develop uh, standards for sustainable trade and, and trade finance. Um, you probably know that the ICC is a century-old institution, uh, regrouping more than 45 million of, of members, corporates, uh, from or, almost around all countries in the world. And uh, our, our task um, is to facilitate trade uh, and, and company developments. Um, a standard um, setting institution, we took over uh, the task uh, to set definitions for what is sustainable trade and, and, and sustainable trade finance. Um, as a result of our um, uh, group and, 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 and analysis, we have released a, paper, a position paper during COP26 um, 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 last uh, November, uh, which highlight uh, our first findings. Um, we'll try to explain it uh, and tell you uh, what are uh, the envisioned uh, next steps for, for this project. Um, so just briefly mentioning that this is a, this is a collective effort of, of our members. So it's more, more than 200 ICC members from various corporations, uh, members of the banking and energy commissions. So really specialists in, in the field of trade finance and also uh, ESG, uh, climate um, and, and so on. And uh, we are really uh, lucky to have the tremendous support of the Boston Consulting Group uh, to, on, on this task. So let's a bit deep, di deep dive uh, in, into, the, into our, our findings. Um, so we, we ask ourselves uh, two questions. Um, so what could be the purpose of such standards and how to achieve the, them, uh, which is perhaps the most relevant part for, for, for you today. Um, so uh, in the what section, uh, um, we were... Um, so meeting the Paris Agreement requirements uh, were, were obviously um, very needed, um, contributing to reaching the UN SDGs and, and bridging, bridging the gap in, in current standard framework and, and clarified between, between the various initiatives we have, we have currently. Um, the how to do it was uh, how to create uh, clear definitions to support businesses um, implement uh, best practices, um, have a uh, workable, it was really an important, uh, important part, uh, having workable standards 
pragmatic and, and universities uh, universally uh, used and easy to be to be used. Um, and yeah, develop overall a robust um, framework um, on sustainable trade. Um, so we framed it around five axes. Um, each of them um, we uh, were were analyzed, so you can you can see them. So the type of trade, um, the type of trade finance, the type of sustainability, the geographic aspect of of the trade, and and where in uh, in the stages of of the value chain. Um, it was it was also agreed uh, not only to focus on on uh, environment only, but rather have a comprehensive. Um, sustainable, sustainability view um, around the ESG, so economic, social, uh, environmental, and have each of the 17 uh, UN SDGs uh, relevant in each, uh, in each dimension, in their, in their own dimension. Um, the challenge uh, we quickly identified um, was to analyze uh, the sustainability of transaction throughout the life cycle of, of, of trade. Um, so we have the five components of, of trade um, from the beginning till the end. So it was equally important for, for us to analyze from what, what trade, so good or services doesn't, it's, it's not clearly not the same and the, the same level of complexity if it's good or, or service until, uh, until the end use. So the, what's the purpose and, and the end use? And uh, as you can see, well, yeah, from the seller, the, the buyer, the way to transport it or the transition side um, each have a specificity and and where when needed to be to be analyzed um, for for this uh, thorough study uh, we were able to frame an, an and we believe understandable scoring matrix and uh, discuss how to to use them and further develop them uh, for for an end product for 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 it to be to be used and, and be and be and be useful um, so perhaps now I will just uh, quickly hand over to Ravi, um, who will uh, tell you about um, how we thought it could be used in practice and how, how it was developed. Thanks, Tamash, if you can move forward a slide. So yeah. I guess the big challenge was, I think Tamash has, has, has done a very good job of, of explaining quite the challenge. Unlike, let's say, a specific project many, or, or a loan where there's clearly one purpose, a given trade has so many different elements that can or cannot be sustainable. Um, what is the actual good? Uh, what is the behavior of the seller? What is the end destination and use? Um, is it being transported by, by air, by ship, by road? And then also, what is the purpose? You know, are we buying solar panels to put on top of um, factories with poor child labor um, practices? That all these different elements that make actually defining sustainable trade extremely complex. And one of the big challenges we've got was, well, are we overcomplicating the problem? And many times we thought that is the case. The problem is that what we don't want to do is put a sustainability stamp on a certain transaction where very unsustainable activities can slip through the net. And I think trade is a prime example. Again, one of the simplest is, you know, if you're, if you're going to have the most ethical, um, you know, raised uh, meat or, or dairy, etc., but then decide to ship it across the world by air, so it arrives the next day in a high-end supermarket, you can't call it sustainable. And I think this is where we've got all these different dimensions. So what we actually did, there's sort of two outcomes to the overall ICC framework. And, you know, by all means, sort of disclaimer, we don't think this is something you can do tomorrow. This is an end state. This is where we want to get to. We need to move through a series of simpler transition states. But what we've done as a framework is effectively split any given transaction into um, five components. The good, the service, sell the origin, the buyer destination, the transition or transportation mechanism, and the purpose. And then we've got the horizontal dimensions, which are effectively simplifications of the UN SDGs. And for each, I suppose, component of transaction and SDG dimension intersection, we would score it basically on, I suppose, four levels. So one, does it actively contribute to economic, human, social, environmental sustainability? 
does it meet sustainable standards? Does it no significant harm? So you can see it's like a sliding scale, or does it actually not meet the minimum requirements at all, i.e. It, it does significant harm? And this effectively, effectively lets us create a matrix that we can then summarize depending on how sustainable it is across the transaction. So that we have a simpler way of determining, okay, well, this is the scorecard for a given transaction. For us, we wanted something quite simple, quite machine readable, but also something that gave enough transparency because one of the big debates we had is that actually it's not that useful to have a binary, this is sustainable, this is not at a transaction level because different banks, different buyers, different suppliers will have also their own, I suppose, thresholds of what they want to do business with or who they want to do business with. The final thing we did is, 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 is add a purpose star effectively to determine is a given transaction actively mitigating the impact of climate change? Um, because this is one of those factoids that many investors or, or, or banks really want to be able to report. Now, this might look very complicated. If we just go forward a page, the intention again is to really present it in a much more simple way. So effectively, depending on the mix of the lowest scoring dimension, ESG, and the best scoring dimension, um, simplify the outcome of transaction to effectively one grade, A plus to X, um, or A plus star to X, depending on, on, on whether it actively mitigates climate change, which would mean that if you put yourself in the shoes of a bank, you can say, well, you know, X percent of our trade is, is, is B or B star, which means that one is a very complex I suppose, framework, while it can be very rich, you can also use it in quite a simple way. So I guess this is where we want to get to. I think what I'm keen to sort of move on to now is, is sort of what that really means in practice. Um, because clearly, yes, this is many people's dream and being able to have this data at the fingertips. In reality, the reality is quite different. Um, Tamash, can you move forward one page, please? So I suppose the challenge number one is what we really want to avoid is, as the ICC be drawing up new standards, there are huge amounts of sustainability standards, ISO, BCI, the UN ones, uh, fair trade. And actually, the last thing we want to do is give banks or corporates, SMEs, any new work to do in terms of, we need to obey with this, we need to comply with that. So our plan is to actually take existing standards, map them, and effectively use them as different levels, whether they're the minimum standards, ICC recognized or active contribution standards, enabling actually hopefully quite a data-driven and straightforward uh, way of, of scoring um, transactions based on information already available today. So for example, if someone um, says, well, this T-shirt complies with BCI, we should be able to say that actually it's going to at least be a B. Um, again, minimizing the overheads for those involved. Thomas, if you could go forward one more. Yeah. Now, I think back on the theme of practicality, I think there are sort of three key sets of considerations as we move towards implementation. So one, as I kind of inferred to quite a lot, like how will this work in practice? What are the standards we need to use? How will this actually be right? Who will do the measurements? What sort of scrutiny will be applied. Um, how do we actually make this relatively automated? Because the last thing we want to do is invent KYC all over again. So it's kind of bucket one. Bucket two, and I think I imagine for this call, the very interesting bucket is what will be the role of technology? I think just building my last point, this needs to be a data and technology problem, not just a definitional problem. Um, we can't have people trying to do due diligence in every single transaction. So are there some sort of common data model, common data elements that are captured within the ecosystem of trade, meaning that we can get to a stage where we're relatively automated with a high degree of confidence in scoring transactions? Is there going to be some central repository of this sustainability data in trade? And is there some sort of order mechanism we need? How that's going to work out is, is sort of a big question. And then also, like, what are banks or corporates actually going to do with this information? Is it going to be used just for reporting? Ideally, we'll see financial institutions actually guiding their portfolio decisions based on the sustainability of transactions. So given all of this, I suppose where we are is we published this positioning paper uh, in sort of November. 
Um, the plan on what we've been doing is really gathering quite a lot of industry feedback and still so that's ongoing. And effectively reach the stage later this year where we can go live with a very bare bones form of this, this, this uh, framework before we move into a slightly more advanced sort of layering on until we reach the full matrix. I think in terms of what that means on the ground is we'll be launching several working groups. Um, and a lot of this is sort of only starting to be kicked off today. One is around actually how do we simplify the framework to better meet the needs of, of industry practitioners based on feedback. Another will be actually standard setters looking at what are the standards and how do we map them uh, to the framework. And then thirdly, we are looking at some sort of a technology type work stream just to crack that problem, uh, which we think is, is, is really fascinating. Um, Tamash, anything else from you before we get to questions? Oh, that's, that's yeah. I think it's the overall picture we have so far. Um, open to any questions, thoughts, comments, uh, and of course, very happy to take them offline. Um, yeah, thanks, Thomas. Thanks, Ravi, by the way. Uh, before going on with the rest of the meeting, we'd love to ask the attendants whether they have any, any questions for the two speakers today. So, uh, Hi. Oh, pardon. Hey, Bhavna. Nice to see you, Hi. by the way. Hey, uh, good, good yeah, afternoon. Good to have you with us. Good day. Oh, I think good day, good day as well. Well, thank you, first of all, uh, for the the call so far. You know, very topical. Absolutely love this uh, topic um, for myself. I just had one question for either Ravi or, or Thomas, basically. I mean, what is the... How are you planning to um, drive uh, adoption around this, um, especially because, you know, sustainability definition does differ from country to country. So is there a tie up somewhere with industry bodies or governments to see because uh, the beauty of trade and also the complexity associated with trade is that it crosses borders, right? So what might be sustainable in one country needs to be sustainable across the entire end-to-end -end chain. So have you given this some thought? Yes, yeah, so that, thanks, Bhavna. That is one of the crux of the problem. So I completely, completely agree. I think what we haven't started yet, that's, that's really going to probably start next month, is this process of taking existing standards and mapping them to the ICC criteria you know if you meet standard x does that mean you meet our minimum standards you um counter sort of the, the, the sort of standard sustainable standards or you're actively mitigating um the sustainability dimension so for example um i'll use example with bci cotton that'll probably be mapped to um our sustainability standards and we think that by building that framework what we're trying to do is build a common ground of global sustainability standards or common mapping table aspect so that we can create a common language across international standards or even cross industry standards. We're hoping that that would break apart quite a lot of this complexity. Now that's easier said than done because it will require quite a lot of governance and the right standard setters and industry professionals to really make some of those calls. Um, I suppose the way I describe the output of that is almost like a globally recognized hierarchy of um, international sustainability standards and how they compare against each other. Um, that's going to be a long piece of work. We need to get effectively specialist industry groups to, to help oversee that. Um, but we're hoping that that should tackle the problem. What we've tried to avoid doing is say, as the ICC, we believe that this is the new international standard. The reason being is that, A, to, we all know that complying with standards from an industry perspective just adds a huge amount of pain and cost and needs no, like, um, adoption is a massive challenge. The second is that actually you're right in the sense that different standards are relevant to different countries. Um, you know, we always use the example of, if you insist that everything is transported by EV in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, well, you know, you're creating a world for your own back. So that's the plan. The, the other overall part of the answer is, look, if we want to increase adoption, we need to listen to banks, we need to listen to corporates. 
Um, and therefore, we, we are engaging closely and will continue to engage closely to actually make sure that we, we reach that common ground where actually corporates and banks think this is workable. Because by having the, the most complex framework that nobody actually wants, people are going to ignore it. And, and we're fully aware of that. Personally speaking, I think, if anything, this target state is already on the side of maybe too complex. Um, and that's what we're hearing. Yeah. And, and I think as you progress your thoughts around this, Ravi, I think what would be good is if you rather than trying to solve for a lot, because trade is just by the nature of it is quite broad, um, is actually kind of ring fence it into a proof of concept and just do it maybe for a very specific use case, you know, very specific industry, very specific set of clients uh, on it. And then once you have kind of used that as a sort of a sandbox, then, you know, think about, you know, from that, whatever you learn from that experience, try to do it more broad. And I think a part of me also says is that just because trade is complex, does the solution need to be complex, right? You know, can we take a leaf from some of the work that has been done around green bonds and green loans, right? Which does not have that complexity from mm -hmm. the way they have determined the nature of saying, okay, we're going to label this as, as a green, green transaction. So, so I would want to be a little bit provocative uh, around this to say, just because trade is complex doesn't mean the solution has to be complex. Maybe we just use a leaf from that book and, and kind of, um, and use it for our advantage as well. So that I'll just leave you with those thoughts. Fair a good point, Bhavna, by the way. This is a very good point. And you pointed out correctly how complex is trade, but often, Complex solutions find pretty pretty simple. Complex picture sometimes find pretty easy solution to be pretty, mm -hmm. pretty simple solutions. So sorry for interrupting. You know, uh, I saw that Ricardo here in the attendance. Ricardo McCarty raised his hands to, to make a question. Then there is another question by Sherwood Moore. Ricardo, are you there? No. So, uh, Robbie or Thomas, I don't know who wants to answer. Uh, Sherwood is asking, how do you approach such a massive challenge? How long do you estimate the framework, the standards will take? So, we yeah, say that the multi year piece, um, very much agree with, with, with Bavna's point around start small, expand wide. So, I think where we plan to get to, probably for the UNGA later this year, is a very simple bare bones framework, but something that's workable. And I'd like to take the challenge of having at least one works more complex example as well, but, but within quite a, an industry niche. So that's kind of the first milestone. Um, it, it is multi-year before we actually have this cracked. Um, so the right standard set uh, across, across all industries. Um, we'll, take it, we'll take it in steps because we're going to learn along the way. Thanks, Ravi. Uh, I see Professor John Taylor as he raised his hand, so I would love to leave stage to him. John, please. By the way, oh, thank you. See you here, John. <laughs> yeah, see you. Oh, thank you, Andrea. It's very, it's a pleasure to be on, and thank you for inviting uh, me to today's uh, seminar um, webinar. It's uh, been very interesting so far. I had just uh, one simple question. As, as you know, uh, I'm an honorary member of BAFT, and BAFT has actually uh, created um, a sustainability working group uh, that is looking at a number of issues around sustainability in trade and trade finance, uh, and uh, uh, is very uh, interested and keen to work uh, alongside and in close cooperation with uh, ICC uh, on this uh, effort that uh, uh, Tomas uh, and his colleague uh, described to us today. It sounds uh, most interesting and also, of course, so relevant uh, for BAFT and its members. And uh, I just wanted to ask, uh, is, is this uh, part of the uh, plan uh, of ICC that uh, they would uh, be very pleased to work uh, with organizations like uh, BAFT on, on these issues. 
Thank you, uh, Andrea. Thank you, John. So it's it's definitely not an, a task we were taking um, by ourselves. Uh, first, it's it's a it's the ICC with throughout its its, mem its membership. So so uh, like I, I said during the presentation, we have like already like more than two hundred um, members uh, which are in various uh, co co um, corporations, banks involved in the yes. project, and and we received uh, actually. Uh, no later than uh, two days ago, we received the the BAFT uh, comment uh, on on the paper. So, uh, and we um, will like obviously um, closely uh, cooperate and and work together. Um, yeah, this is, oh, this is uh, really exciting to see that this is um, attracting a lot of attention, a lot of comments, sometimes some harsh questions, but that's how how we can develop the, the the framework further and and we happy i think to have uh, to have that attention um uh, on this so yeah there is i can already spoil it to you it's going to be further cooperation with with other institutions fantastic look thank you very much and uh, we look forward to it uh, you'll you'll get real responsiveness uh, from BAFT. I'm, I'm very pleased to hear that you have received the comments already and uh, uh, we, we look forward and, and wish you well in the development. Uh, this, is an, this is an important project uh, and uh, the trade finance community, particularly trade and trade finance, can really uh, do a lot uh, of positive uh, development in this area, but will need the sort of help that you are providing. Thank you. Uh, thanks, John. Thanks, Thomas. Uh, I saw Tom Klein wanting to make a question. Tom. Sure thing. Thanks, Ravi. Thanks, uh, Tomas. Here, quick question here. It sounds like you guys are being technology neutral in implementation here, um, but I'm wondering if you have blockchain as a consideration for technology, or have you started down that path there? Notice the. Uh, do we need a central repository as opposed to a decentralized repository? So you're smiling there, Ravi. So <laughs> I'm giving you a loaded I, question. I should be more careful with words um, <laughs> because the word central definitely didn't mean not decentralized. Um, yeah. That's a very good question. So we have we we really haven't delved into the tech side of things. Um, I think where we are from a tech perspective is. KYC is such a, such a pain for everybody. It doesn't really work. It basically, it's every financial institution doing, doing the same work repeatedly. Um, we are many, many years later now. Let's not go down that path. So there is a certain, there's certain activity around collecting information, storing information, bringing back up that information and using it that there have to be synergies about doing it smartly from a tech perspective. So that's kind of one. Number two, the less work it is to comply, the more corporations and banks will comply. So there's really quite a strong case to get tech right. Um, central repository is one sort of idea. It's effectively, I think the big questions I've got are, is there a common data model? And is there a way to share this sort of data and record it? Um, yeah. Centralized, decentralized, haven't given that too much thought. Certainly crossed our minds that there is a DLT type possibility to this, but it, I think it has to be subsumed also into the broader, how is sustainability data going to give, be managed across, across banking in general? Yeah, okay. Um, that, that there's certainly use cases for DLT here. Right. No, that, make, that makes sense. Something similar for those of you in the food uh, food world, uh, new era of food safety here in the United States. Uh, don't, doesn't specify blockchain, but it was kind of in the back of the mind that there'd be some benefits for using blockchain or DLTs out there. And, so, and there are examples. I don't know if you've seen OpenSC before, which is um, yes. WWF. It's, you know, that's a prime example of that is DLT. And it would actually answer a lot of the questions on, on the page for very, very niche I think it's like prawns or something where it's like a very, very niche yeah. uh, transactions. Good. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, Ravi, um, for the answer. 
There's one more question from Alfonso. It's asking, have you considered schema.org to structure parameters in data for your framework? So the prior question probably answered where we are from the, uh, the tech and data side. Not yet, need to look into stuff like that. So I appreciate the, the recommendation. I think if anything, it stresses that we need to get this tech group set up um, with people who are really close to this, but um, it's something we'll look into and might pick your brains off on say if that's okay. Cool, perfect. Please, please do. Please do, and thank you for the answer and for an extraordinary yeah, presentation. Uh, one more question from a friend, Ricardo from Bahamas. He's asking, Ravi, would you guys consider collaborations regarding creating an implementation process for the tech that will be utilized within this project? So, we're a, so, so our general sort of mentality here, and so much I know I'm speaking about the ICC here, so, so do chip in if you disagree, is we want to create quite open working groups to, to really capture the best of the industry minds. Um, so yes, we're open to collaboration. The only sort of point I'd, I'd sort of pick on is in, we're not yet at the stage where we even have anything to implement from a tech mm -hmm. side. So I think it's cracking the problem, understanding the solution, and then thinking about implementing. But um, yes, we, we, we will all be reaching out uh, amongst the industry to, to create the right groups. And if people are interested to get to, to uh, be involved, we haven't even set up the tech group yet. So um, I would recommend reaching out to Tamash in particular so we can start putting that together. Yeah, yeah totally. We have a question from uh, Sherwood. Uh, yeah. Yes, uh, thank ah, you. Sure. Um, yeah, so Ravi, thank you very much for this presentation. I was not able to catch the very beginning of it. So I, I apologize if you've already answered this question, um, but the challenges that you are tackling are challenges that uh, uh, we are also kind of considering how to approach in the, in the climate action and accounting SIG. Um, and, we're, and we're actively, you know, kind of recruiting corporate partners to, to try to kind of focus on individual use cases to kind of figure out how to kind of tackle some of these things. Uh, so the question I have for you is, um, you know, as you think through your approach, uh, what are some of the different examples? What are the models that you look at to, design, to develop your own approach? Um, because we, we, I think we'd really love to kind of understand, you know, we'll see how other organizations or, or other examples of when um, uh, the kind of standards uh, uh, and, and kind of protocols have, have kind of been developed. Um, so we can kind of get, really figure out that more tactical approach uh, when when uh, we kind of arrive to to actually kind of uh, solve solving some some real industry challenges. Sorry, to, just just to catch your question, as in, what what you mean? What did we use as inspiration for our approach? Or yeah, like how how are you going to do it? I, I understand what you're doing, but you know, kind of more tactically, you know, what how, how do you go about doing this? Okay, so. The first step in, in real execution is we've got a bunch of feedback from banks and corporates um, from the positioning paper. Take that and start with the most bare bones framework. And what that really means is, is questions and compliance standards that banks and corporates could quite quickly actually answer. Probably even like keep things climate related for now. Um, ideally elements or things that can actually be answered through data itself. Um, so start with a basic framework, use that as a proof of concept, and then layer on levels of complexity. And when I say start with a basic framework, basically prioritize criteria that are easily measured. When we say easily measured, that is stuff that's already recorded or, or reported against in the industry. And the other is things where actually you can do in quite a data-driven way. Um, certain businesses already look at how can you actually measure sustainability data. Carbon is an example, right? Actually, carbon transparency has skyrocketed in recent years. Is there something we can do there? Um, I imagine we will start with just, are there any elements that are recorded today by, by the relevant parties in trade? I imagine we might need to actually start in something that's far more measurable in the corporate world than the SME world, just because of the commonality of, of reporting. Um, and move from there. But to be honest, in the first few iterations, we're going to prioritize 
simplicity in implementability over rigor, uh, just just to get somewhere. How do you, is it a, is it a consensus? How do you make the systems consensus driven? What from the ICC? Yeah, so, so when you have a bunch of different banks coming together and it's a particular sticky issue with differences of opinion, what is your approach to coming to an agreement? So the way the first paper was written was very much, there was a, a stair code, a stair code chosen by ICC, and we took on board feedback from about 200 banks and corporates. Um, moving forward, as we actually start to set standards, we need to have representatives through industry bodies um, to, to really ensure that it's everything is fairly represented. But again, like what we're not doing is we are for, for one partly for what you, you just challenged, is we don't want to write the standards ourselves as the ICC because right. we have no right to do that. Um, yep. and we're not necessarily qualified to do that. Um, and standards yep. exist. So when you're, so I, I work for for I I can for my for my day job and, and um, you're describing what we do every day um, for internet governance and it's, yeah it's tricky yeah <laughs> it is tricky I hope that answers your question good okay, thank you great perfect uh, Tom Eric I think we could let's say and the first part of the meeting. And thank Thomas and Ravi for being with us today. I hope you're going to stay. And we, we can restart from this point. Presenting the version of the suit six. Thank you. Yeah, thank yes, you thank very you much. Thomas. Thank you, Ravi. This was wonderful. Pleasure. Thank yeah, you very it was much. Really great presentation. Very interesting. So comes the second part, and by the way, I hope you will all stay with us because uh, uh, I'll get start this one in, by linking, see what was done last year. Uh, if you all followed our pathway in 2021, mid-June last year, we launched an initiative that we named Breaking the Silos. Uh, we delivered the message actually in June 15th with a call to action uh, to let the six and working groups within the hyperledge community join forces together, come close, bring in silos that they're in to deliver global valuable solutions. So within this uh, framework, major framework, um, we found space for collaboration. And one of these realized at the end of 2021 that one of these could be uh, merging hyperledge trade funds SIG with supply chain SIG. These two topics have been pretty uh, intimately entwined. If you look at what trade funds is, is so closely entwined with logistics, with supply chain, of course, with foreign direct investment. So we thought, I mean, Eric, Tom and I, we thought, hey, why don't we merge two SIG? And that's what we're here for today present the initiative and the following steps we will long go through. It's with extreme pleasure, we're going to team up. No secret that this year, and that's why I asked Thomas and Ravi to join us today, we will be deeply focused in 2021 and in 2022, and hopefully next year on the topics of ESG, environmental, social impact and governance topics, and sustainable development goals as well. So, uh, I'll leave on to Tom and to Eric that are here with me today to unveil the following steps we will, um, we will go through. And it's, say, Thomas, Tom. Can, can we, let, let's also do some introductions here for uh, those mm -hmm who are from the trade finance world and they know you, Andrea, but they don't know uh, myself Absolutely. as well, Derek. And uh, the same thing from the supply chain, uh, SIG, they don't know you, so uh, this would be good. So uh, folks, we, uh, we've decided two things. We, we decided one thing. Uh, it took us a lot longer on name and thank you for the people that uh, submitted some uh, 
some thoughts. Uh, we decided to stick with a very basic theme here for the uh, for 2022 going forward here. We're going to be the supply chain and trade finance SIG. We're not going to complicate it. We we really thought hard about global trade as one option, but we wanted to get the logistics and domestic markets and those kind of things into it. So we're staying. So the name is going to stay forward as uh, supply chain and trade finance, and the wikis will be coming together and all that kind of stuff. And Eric will talk a little bit about that. So quick, I'll do an introduction myself. Uh, I was one of the co-chairs for the supply chain special interest group. I uh, actually learned about these SIGs two, almost two years ago at the Global Forum in Phoenix. And I kind of got excited. Okay, here's something that's more industry focused as opposed to technology focused. I mean, certainly we, we uh, understand and want to work with tech, the technology, but I like the fact that there's, okay, here's something that where we can apply some use cases. And we all know that they're thinner on the ground uh, there's not as many as we'd all like them to. Um, so I, I got involved with the supply chain SIG and became co-chair, uh, I guess, late, late in 2020. It's hard to believe all this kind of stuff uh, here and have been involved since. Uh, I'm excited for us coming together. Uh, my interest obviously is in supply chain and use cases associated with that. Uh, I'm also very interested in governance. I do some work with uh, IEEE P2145. Uh, basically, it's a governance standards uh, group. So I've been doing some work with that. Um, I also am have a working on a startup around social impact and specifically around youth and how to get global, how to get youth who are not going to college into the workforce more easily, and then help them stay in the workforce and provide future ready paths uh, going forward. So those are some of the things, and I'm all. I'm thinking that blockchain is underneath a lot of these in order to make these things go uh, a lot uh, smoother here. For those of you from the trade finance side, uh, I'll point you to the 23rd of October last year. Myself, I saw Jeff Stolman. We did a presentation for the Hyperledger Washington Group on uh, introduction to supply chain. And if you're interested, you can go back and look at that on YouTube, that uh, video to understand a little bit more about what's going on in supply chain. So with that, Eric, I'll turn it over to you. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate uh, everybody coming together today. My name is Eric Vendiquet. Uh, I come from the logistics and supply chain world. So I grew up in freight forwarders and customs brokers. And what got me interested in uh, blockchain a few years ago, pretty much the same time, well, been interested in blockchain for a while, but came to the uh, Hyperledger SIG about two years ago, uh, was... The frustration that I've been living for the last 30 years around bad information, bad data in the freight forwarding world. Uh, for those who know the, the, the logistics world, uh, a lot of different parties, a lot of uh, data that's exchanged, uh, a lot of you know for, uh, goods being flowed around the world by these companies. And uh, not a whole lot of them have uh, uh, technology on their roadmap. Well, not you know uh, up to uh, up to the pandemic, at least uh, before that, uh, they were not uh, the industry was not a very technology savvy industry. Uh, so that's why he became uh, involved in in blockchain. He became interested, started an industry association to bring the supply chain world around blockchain. Uh, so that was started here in Canada about two years ago as well. Canadian Blockchain Supply Chain Association. And now we're growing globally into the Blockchain Supply Chain Association, just an overall industry uh, neutral uh, party industry association, just to, to build communities and build interest around blockchain for the supply chain world. Happy to be here as well. And now, Andrea, how about you introduce yourself to the supply chain folks? Everybody knows Andrea already, but just for the sake of it, right? No, no worries, uh, Eric. Uh, uh, I've been running the SIF two years nowadays, by now. So we, we went deeply into this last year. Those who followed us, who have been following us through, through the journey that we had. So uh, unlike Tom, I'm not a technical guy. I don't have a technical background. I come from the straight trade finance world. Not even that, because I've been working basically in two multinational companies, so deeply exposed to all the problems, all the features by trade finance. And I have natural pension for innovation. So I found blockchain the, the ideal workspace 
and not to go back to the old world, let's say so. So glad to start cooperating in 2022 with these two guys. Uh, what was missing, I guess, during the last two years in uh, trade financing was uh, delivering some projects, some tangible product. So I think all of the initiatives undergoing within the community in 2022 will hopefully manage to deliver what was missing last year. So projects more and more into these. And of course, this is the ideal case, you see, for fulfilling the project that we had. So my biggest goal is to let not only merging to safe, but step by step enhancing collaboration intra safe. So not only supply chain, not only trade funds, but also social impact, climate change. Because if you see, we've been looking at this sustainability goals, we're looking to ESG, especially during the last meeting that we have been Mr. Alexander Malakat. That's a, a game sport, just like blockchain is. So seen under a broader picture, uh, in my understanding, this merging will lead to enhanced collaboration with the rest of the six of uh, Happy Ledger. And that's my very primary goal for this year. This is just the beginning. This is a kickoff meeting. Hopefully more in the future will come. We will have special meeting like we did, by the way, in 2021, and can see, can, can wait to do to go for that. Good. Hey, Andrea, can I uh, add a little bit to that? Yeah, please do, Tom. Based, based on the chart that we have up here, um, similar to trade finance, we had a set of calls uh, all last year uh, for supply chain. We started off doing some small projects. We had limited success and we're really looking for uh, taking that idea and making it bigger, making it more valuable here. I mean, these aren't just words here that engage, increase engagement and creating more value for participants. I mean, we'll have a next chart here. We'll talk about how to add value uh, or at least how we're thinking initially here. Well, we're viewing, we're not but, and we're viewing this as we're all together on this. We all have a similar interest in uh, Taking, taking blockchain and using it as a mechanism to solve a lot of the problems in supply chain, trade finance, and all the things that go around it out there. Uh, so from, from that perspective, increase engagement, creating more value and an opportunity for involvement in thought leadership. I mean, we're, 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 Andrea, Eric, and myself are very open to words, thoughts, uh, emails, et cetera here to help guide and work together going here forward in 2022. Hi, Tom, Andrea, I just dropped, yeah. I just dropped, I'm sorry, is this a- No, go ahead, Bhavna. No, sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you. Sorry, I was about to read it, but you take the word, take the stage, okay. please. Go ahead. All right, is this that because I have a hard stop in 10 minutes, so I was curious about, uh, uh, about any POCs uh, that you may have done. So Tom, I just posted a question in the chat, uh, if you have done any POCs and if you could talk a little bit about that. It, our, our group has not done any POCs uh, itself. I'll we'll, we'll talk about that in the next chart here, hopefully uh, where we're looking to do some sort of pilot around uh, climate accounting and Sherwood who asked some questions earlier um, was, uh, is somebody that we're working with and we're hoping with that group, the carbon, tra carbon tracking initi initiative there is the last one. That's something we're looking to do here and actually generate some code and uh, build something here in 2022. Okay, so and you're at a stage where you're developing the, the underlying technology at this moment, right? Well, maybe I'll just talk about it right now. Uh, okay. And sure would feel free to reach in. So, so there's another SIG here, climate action and accounting. So as part of breaking down the silos, we've said that, yes, we want to work with another other groups even besides merging our group. So with this climate accounting or climate action and accounting group, they've already done some work around measurement, reporting, verification of climate data. Now it's how do I, what kind of tracking do I do associated with that? And what kind of 
kind of, I'll use the word repository after I ask the question about centralized via, via decentralized, but you know, some common area where folks can go and, and get climate data out there. The part, and this is, so we have not started bringing this all together, although there's pieces uh, of it. Probably the biggest thing is where do we want our focus to be? There's been some discussion around gas flaring. How do we track that? Um, there's a, some discussion about how do we track a package as it gets shipped uh, throughout a supply chain and what's the emissions that come along with that. Those are probably the two prominent ones right now, but I, obviously the group would be open to others out there. Does that can answer I, the question? Can I, it, it does, you know, I, I just get a sense in terms of what stage uh, you are on, but may I be cheeky to just ask one quick question uh, on this it. as well? Um, when you when you talk about supply chain, what level of uh, um, how how deep do you go in, or or my maybe a question is how how deep do you need to go in? Because you know there are a lot of downstream you know levels in a supply chain. So I'm just curious to say my first question is how do you deep how deep you need to go in, and the second question is if the answer to it is well beyond the you know not just the first. Um, set of suppliers, but the suppliers to those suppliers, then what is a level that you can go down to or you're planning yeah. to go down to? Are you asking a question specifically about carbon or are you asking that in general? No, I'm just asking about carbon. Okay. Um, actually, one of the things I should have said is we're looking at scope three is the focus okay. here. So, so yeah, so is scope three means something? Yes, yeah. Scope okay, three good. Yeah, so we're, yeah. Because we're figuring that scope one people kind of probably have a somewhat reasonable handle on it, right? Yeah. <laughs> scope two, again, you know what power you're buying from different places. Scope three is all this other stuff out there. And I mean, one of the questions I wanted to ask Ravi and uh, Tomas was, uh, what are those all those energy companies that you talk to <laughs> thinking about scope three? They probably don't score very well <laughs> on it. So yeah, scope three is where, where we're right now, our plan is on the focus. Thank you, Tom. Sure thing. Um, Andrea and uh, Eric, do you want to talk about the other two planned activities here, just in the interest of time? I'll let Andrea talk about uh, what uh, our uh, schedule looks like, and maybe I can talk about the Hyperledger Challenge, and thank you for uh, taking care of the uh, carbon tracking initiative, Tom. Sure. We're all together, right? Better together. <laughs> <laughs> so... There's, there are a few planned activities for 2021. Uh, basically, the goal is to go for every two weeks meeting as we scheduled last year, as you saw. Maybe we're going to have some, uh, some more, I mean, special meetings as we did in 2021. That it has to be really special. And you see, uh, we're going to shift, I mean, if you followed our activities in 20 in during the last two years, actually we were a straight fancy, deeply focused and deeply rooted in the epic region. There were participants from Hong Kong, from Singapore as well. That's what the real deal is in terms of DLTs and digitization. So we'll try to, to go on with this and have more meetings. Uh, in, the, in the space, so we will shift. We don't have a really fixed time. Uh, most probably we're going to shift every two weeks. We're going to have a meeting in the Africa region to cover the whole globe, to have a really global outreach. So we're going to be deeply focused also on LinkedIn activities. You will be notified, you see, what the meetings through LinkedIn, not only on the main list. So stick around through that. Uh, our goal is to not only to be focused on meetings, as I said, one of the missing points in 2021 were the project. So we plan to deliver more and more about this. Um, the next step is to go for the overall Happy Ledger Challenge. We're about to launch this. Uh, so Eric will will tell you more about this. We just kick started uh, the initiative. We'll go through the following step. 
for the conclusion that is the scene for August 2nd this year. And as detailed by Tom previously, we have an initiative to develop a carbon tracking uh, solution with a climate action and accounting say. So this scene in 2022 is just the beginning. As I said, we're going to focus deeply on ESG and sustainable development goals. This is the real focus of 2022. So more and more, I'm planning to shift not only, I'm planning to focus not only on the technical side, but also on the size of this deal will be dealt uh, to start with the, the legal side of uh, these topics. So we're in discussions with more speakers. Uh, I'll notify with what's going on with a follow-up very soon. So follow us. I'll leave it on to Eric to display what we are we are actually putting in place with the Hyperledger Global Challenge 2022. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. I have the easy job of explaining the Hyperledger Challenge to you and the difficult job of trying to do it in the next uh, ooh, one minute because it's uh, getting close to the hour. So bear with me. I will try to make this simple for you. Back in 2020, I believe, the India chapter of Hyperledger had a hackathon uh, bringing together uh, the student community, the uh, developer community around building you know, innovative products uh, around Hyperledger. Um, so that being said, and then being that I can't say no to Andrea, he roped me into uh, a conversation with a few of uh, the uh, other team members of that hackathon. And as a group, we decided to kind of go global with this uh, with this uh, event. Uh, so we are uh, we just launched a few weeks ago something called Hyperledger Challenge. It is a hackathon type event that uh, started off uh, like we mentioned a few weeks ago, and it will go until the month of August. So it's a competition. It's not a a weekend hackathon. It's a long term event. We are looking for the community, the Hyperledger community, to bring forward innovative projects, either around business solutions or around improvement uh, of Hyperledger code, no matter what. It is absolutely open to everyone. It is open to students. It is open to business. Uh, if you're an individual and you're looking for, uh, for uh, support around the challenge, we can certainly do that. Uh, there is information on either our LinkedIn pages or in the Hyperledger Wiki. Uh, you can reach out to uh, myself or Andrea or Arun, for those who know Arun, or Nancy, uh, for those who know Nancy. And uh, hopefully we can get your participation. And as my extra responsibility, I'm also uh, in charge of the sponsorship. So if you think of companies uh, or individuals that uh, would like to sponsor this event by giving you know, free uh, cloud services or, uh, or education courses or swag uh, or mentorship, uh, you know, subject matter experts, uh, have them reach out to us. We will gladly have a conversation with them. We are looking for your involvement. We are looking to, to make this a big event and we're looking to uh, bring innovation uh, to uh, not only supply chain and trade finance, but to social impact, to climate impact, to all the different uh, groups that we have at Hyperledger uh, through this beautiful event, culminating hopefully at Global Forum, I heard in Europe, maybe in September. So that's it about the Hyperledger Challenge. Thank you very much. In under two minutes. So with that, I... Well, did I you have that? Go ahead, my friend. No, no, no. I was just saying that I think we come into an hour. So I would love to thank all the attendants for this meeting and would love them to, to stay tuned, follow us in 2022, hopefully with the goal to go bigger and bigger and deliver more valuable contents and projects. Stick around and we'll see you soon for the next meetings. Beautiful. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy the Thank weekend. Thank everyone. Bye. Appreciate Thank it. you. Have a great weekend. Take care. Bye. Take care. Bye.